Today is the Great Feast of Pentecost here in Chicago. <coughs> the epistle is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. When the days of Pentecost were drawing to a close, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a violent wind blowing, and it filled the whole house <clears throat> where they were sitting. And there appeared to them parted tongues as, as of fire, which settled upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak in foreign tongues, even as the Holy Ghost prompted them to speak. Now they were staying at Jerusalem, devout Jews, men of every nation, under heaven. And when this sound was heard, the multitude gathered and were bewildered in mind, because each heard them speaking in his own language. But they were all amazed and marveled, saying, Behold, are not all these that are speaking Galileans? And how have we heard each his own language in which he was born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya around Cyrene and visitors from Rome, Jews also, and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We have heard them speaking in our own languages the wonderful works of God. The Holy Gospel from St. John chapter 14. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone love me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our abode with him. He who does not love me <clears throat> does not keep my words. And the word that you have heard is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while yet dwelling with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your mind whatever I have said to you. <coughs> <clears throat> peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, and be, nor be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I go away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would indeed rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes to pass, then when it has come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you, for the prince of this world is coming, and in me he has nothing. But he comes that the world may know that I love the Father, and that I do as the Father has commanded me. Thus are the words of the Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Today we have a very special event on this Feast of Pentecost, which is a very solemn feast. This is when the Catholic Church was really born, right under the direct power of God, who came down in tongues of fire on the most blessed Virgin Mary. So she is the Mediatrix, and God made that very visible on this feast that the Holy Ghost came and the fire first came on the Virgin Mary because she was already filled with the Holy Ghost to the utmost capacity. She's called the spouse of the Holy Ghost by, by St. Maximilian Kolbe and many saints, the spouse of the Holy Ghost because she uh, was so filled with the Holy Ghost. She was the perfect instrument of the Holy Ghost. As when you write with your pen, when you write with a pen, you don't expect the pen to, to clog up or rebel against you and not write or bend or do strange things. You just, you don't even notice it. it. It does what you want it to do, and it forms the letters you want to form. That's what the Virgin Mary is in the hands of the Holy Ghost, the perfect docile instrument. While we, we often break, we often rebel, we often stab the hand that wants to use us for, for the good. That is, we rebel against God by sin. So the Virgin Mary, she was so filled with the Holy Ghost, and she was 
filled more with the Holy Ghost. And then from her the flames descended on St. Peter and the other apostles. Why tongues of fire? Because their tongues will inflame the world with the love of God, which they will preach by preaching the Holy Catholic faith, the center of which is Jesus and Jesus crucified. And this is what the Mass is, Jesus and Jesus crucified. So, 50 days after Christ was crucified came Pentecost, which was the descent of the Holy Ghost. This was prefigured by uh, the Israelites when they crossed the Red Sea. 50 days after crossing the Red Sea, they came to Mount Sinai. That's when Moses received the Ten Commandments. That was the first Pentecost. And it was God manifesting himself with fire and lightning, thunder, and the earth quaking. And still today, you can see archaeologists have sent up drones, and hikers have gone up to Mount Sinai, and the top of Mount Sinai is all black as if burned. But there's no forest, there's no wood. There's no, it's impossible to have a forest fire. So it's, a, it's a, 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 an archaeological proof of Genesis and Exodus and Deuteronomy, that God manifested himself on Mount Sinai. And it's there that Mount Moses was there for 40 days and he received the tablets of stone with the commandments written on by the finger of God. But here, 50 days after Christ's crucifixion, is the real Pentecost, where the finger of God, the Holy Ghost, is written on our hearts. And the law of God is the fulfillment, as our Lord says, of all the law and the prophets, is the love of God and the love of our neighbor for the love of God. And the love of God means we must love in truth, as St. John says. We must love in the Catholic truth. If we love someone, we want them to save their souls. We want to bring them to the truth of the faith. We don't love someone when we say, oh, you can be a good Protestant or a good Muslim, or you can be a good Buddhist, or I'll go to your non-Catholic wedding, or I'll go to your wedding, you're a Catholic baptized, but you're getting married by some Protestant minister. I'll go that because I want to be charitable. That's not charitable. In fact, that's murderous. When we lead or approve sin, it's murderous to our neighbor. That's why one of the works of mercy is to correct with charity and humility, correct the sinner. Because knowing that we are also poor sinners. So today is also a very happy day because Grace, 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 right? Mm -hmm. She's going to be filled with grace today. Our Lord has looked at this hour in this Mass from all eternity. He's been looking at his watch, so to speak. He couldn't wait for this day. God has waited for this day from all eternity because he's going to come to you, Grace, at your first communion. He's going to fill your soul with his divine fire of his love. You're going to really receive the very body, blood, soul, and divinity of God himself, the burning heart of Jesus, which is like the sweet wine. It's a delicious and sweet wine, a delicious fruit of immortality that gives you eternal life. This is the power and the excess of God's love that he wants to be so united to us that he invented a way to do it which only God could invent. Establishing Catholic priesthood and changing bread and wine into his body, blood, soul, and divinity. And the priest, as it were, plucks off the, tr the fruit off the tree of life. As we say, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. What is this fruit off the tree of life, off the cross? The, pr the priest plucks that fruit off and gives it to you in Holy Communion. When Adam and Eve would eat of the tree of life, <clears throat> it would give them immortality it would give them all the vitamins, minerals, and nourishment that they needed. They would never die. They were never meant to die. But because they disobeyed God by eating of the wrong tree, they were driven out of paradise, and we lost the tree of life. But God in his goodness and mercy has given us back that tree, that which is the cross. And the fruit of this tree is far more powerful than the fruits of the garden of paradise because it's God himself. 
So this is the fruit you're going to eat. The very delicious and sweet fruit that will give you not just health of body and soul, which it does, but even eternal life. And it's a pledge of future glory. So grace, on your first communion, ask God great things. All the saints longed and looked forward to their first communion. Think of St. Maria Goretti. In her days, they had to wait till they were 12 to receive communion. And she, she so longed for that day. And she wanted her soul to be pure. And she made good, a good confession. And she didn't want to sin. She would sometimes go get water down at the well. And the other kids would be there, but they'd be talking dirty and telling dirty jokes and taking God's name in vain. And she didn't want to be around that. She chose to be around that. And they all wanted to be around her because she was very pretty. And she was so, uh, she had a lot of pizzazz and character and, and charm. But she wouldn't want any part of the, of the foul talk. So she deliberately chose to stay away from the occasions of sin and bad company. And that's how we have to be on this earth. We have to cut those ropes that will drag us to hell and those temptations that slide us into sin. So, Grace, what a happy day for you. Ask our Lord to become a saint. Ask our Lord to love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Pray for your mom and dad. Pray for your family. Pray for Grandma and all the relatives. And for all of us... <clears throat> For all of us, let's make this also as if it was our first communion. Like it really was our very first communion. And our Lord will give you also an increase of grace with this holy communion. So let's ask the Sacred Heart of Jesus, a great love for him and a great hatred of all that offends him. Because such is the excess of the love of God that Protestants and Baptists and Muslims and all the false religions, they don't know the love of God the way Catholics do, traditional Catholics especially, because it's the real love of God who gives himself in this way so that we will love him in return and enjoy the vision of him forever in heaven, which is why we're here on earth. O Mary, conceived without sin, O Mary, conceived without sin, O Mary, conceived without sin, and for those who do not have recourse to thee especially, all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.